I actually want to start um, without my laptop at all. I, I want to actually just, I'm here I'm seeing all these signs about water. I actually just want to try to make rain. So I, I need your help. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to rub your hands together like this. Just rub your hands. Now I want you to start snapping. Okay, and then lightly clapping. A little louder. A little louder. Louder. Stomp your feet. Clap. And then clapping. And then snapping. And rub your hands. Nice. Um, the second thing I want to do, I'm, I'm chewing into all my time. The second thing I want to do, I want you to stand up. I want you to put your right hand over, or sorry, your right hand uh, up, and then I want you to put it on the shoulder of somebody that you don't know. <laughs> and now I want you to take your left hand, put it up, and put it on the shoulder of somebody else that you don't know. <laughs> and this looks amazing from here. Um, and what I want you to do is really quickly, I want you to just introduce yourself and make a new friend. <laughs> All right, so a uh, quick introduction to myself. Um, I used to look like this. Uh, I studied painting and printmaking, and my background is in fine arts, and it's actually kind of accidental that I wound up using computers and technology. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm, I've done a bunch of projects, I'm not going to talk so deeply about them, but um, there are a few that are just really dear to my heart. So this is a project that I helped work on called The Eye Writer, where we collaborated with a paralyzed graffiti writer, uh, an amazing artist named Tempt One, and a group of us worked together with him, and we helped build an open source eye tracking system that followed the movements of his eyes. So he's completely paralyzed. He has a disease called ALS. He, he, um, he is on a ventilator that helps him breathe. Um, but he can move his eyes. And we built a tool that tracks his eye movements and follows the movements and um, allows him to draw graffiti. And then we projected that graffiti live and streamed it back into the hospital room. And done projects like this, this is called the IQ font, it worked with Toyota. Toyota has this small car, they think that you can't drive it quickly, that if you drive it um, too fast, it's gonna tip over, that's what people's misconception is. And we designed a typeface, basically letters of the alphabet, and we hired a stunt driver to drive the alphabet and um, made a font completely out of driving. Um, and do a variety of these kind of interactive projects. This is in New Zealand. This is using your body um, and using, uh, taking people's bodies and transforming them into kind of five-story uh, monsters. A lot of random stuff. This is me hanging out with my friend Daito um, in this hotel lobby in Belgrade, and we were just working on, um, pr like, projecting on the face. And you can imagine what people in the hotel thought of us. Um, this is a performance, this is actually a very, very old project, but I think it really explains where I'm coming from. And this is a uh, longtime collaborator, Global 11, and I worked on this. This is called Many Limpid Sessions. And it combines an overhead projector, so the kind of projector that your math teacher would write notes on, and a digital projector, kind of mixing analog and digital light to create this kind of hybrid light. Um, all right, so I'm going to uh, pause, interlude for a second. So I gave this talk at AIGA this year, and um, this is a big conference, and before the talk, my wife sent me this amazing text message. And she's like, good luck with your talk, and then she said, say some new shit, man. Um, which was really good, because I say the same stuff over and over again. Um, Climb some new mountains, man, which I think is like an amazing thing to get from your wife. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm going to open up, I want to show you what I do. So I'm going to open up Xcode, and, and I'm going to show you kind of my work. I'm actually going to write some code together. So um, this is what I do on a daily basis. Um, let's change the type, make it a little bigger. Um, and then um, I'm just going to run this code. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to make a window. Um, this kind of black window, 800 pixels by 800 pixels. I'm going to draw a circle. Set the color, we'll have to draw a circle. And it's going to be pretty boring at first. It's going to be a circle. 
400, 400, radius of 50, see what happens. Okay, so, but the thing about the computer is the computer is quite good at doing stuff repetitively, that you can tell it, you know, I don't want to draw one circle, I want to draw thousands of circles. Um, and so I love to play and just see what the computer can do, so. Um, I'm always amazed at how nervous I get typing in front of the, <laughs> like, the first time I did this, my hands were shaking. Um, all right, so here I'm going to draw 800 circles. I'm just going to change their height. And so now we're drawing a line. We're drawing circles on top of each other to kind of make almost a brush. Um, and then I really like to play with time um, and use time in animation. So grab time. And then uh, 200 times sine of time is i times 0.01. One, let's just make a little wave. So start to say, like, okay, we just start with a circle. Let's draw a bunch of circles. Let's start to animate them. Um, let's animate their radius. So make it kind of move and um, get a little funky. And maybe let's do this. a little weird, kind of a cool shape, a little, let's try, let's make it a little chill, okay. Um, and then let's add some color. We'll have set color, 127 plus 127 times sine of time plus i, i times. So this is what I do. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm an artist, and, I, and I basically I write code. I tell the computer what to do, and I try to make drawings with the computer. And so um, let's try this. Let's offset these a little bit. Um, let's do this a little more chill. Okay. So we start with a circle. right? We start with just like a, a simple circle, and then we add to it, and we add complexity, we add layers to it. And, um, and this is what I do, this is um, you know, what, what, what my life is about, my artistic work is about. Um, and I do really three things. I work as an artist, a, um, I guess you would say a designer, and uh, doing commercial work, and I, I teach. And so I help run a school, it's called the School for Poetic Computation. We're an experimental school based in New York City, and students come from all over the world to study for 10 weeks. We have a 10-week program, it's kind of an alternative to graduate school where you could learn about computation and how to use computation and electronics for making poetry. Um, and we really love the idea of poetry and poets, like celebrating poetry, so trying to bring poetry to the forefront. Not, not saying I'm a coder, but rather I'm a poet. Um, and the word poem is so beautiful. Um, if you take the word demo, so in technology there's this culture of sort of demo, um, a demo is so easily turned into the word poem, and just seems like we should be celebrating poems and not demos. Um, and I love poetry, you always have to go to the back of the bookstore. So if you go, you, when you go to look at poetry, it's like never in the front, it's always way in the back. And it's these tiny books, and nobody's getting rich writing poems, but they're beautiful, they're beautiful expression, they're, um, they're ambiguous and filled with meaning and, and really rich, and we want to celebrate that and, and see how we can bring that kind of energy to um, this digital work that we make. And so we do all kinds of stuff, learning about computation, how building computers from scratch. And one of the things that we do is, um, I teach a class called Recreating the Past. And we look at artwork from the past, and the students have to recreate them. And we're inspired by this book, um, there's this amazing book by a Japanese artist named Osamo Sato. Pull this up, The Art of Computer Designing. This is a book from the 90s. Um, and it's just like super awesome. Just the graphic language is like totally great. Um, and I just love this book. It's all about how to use computers to make art. Um, but at the end of this book, there's this one sentence that I think is just kind of amazing. Let's go. He has this afterword. And he said, he's just thanking people, and he said, I would love to thank my favorites, the Russian avant-garde, Futurism Bauhaus, whose brilliant typefaces and designs have in many ways shaped my own mind. If these artists and 
movements were alive to now to work with computers, I'm certain they would discover new artistic possibilities. The work of past ages accumulates and is remade again. And this one sentence I just find so beautiful, the work of the past is remade again. That we can take the work from the past and we can remake it. So in this class, what we do is every week we focus on a different artist, and it's the job of the students to recreate their work. So for example, we look at designers like Muriel Cooper, who helped create the MIT Media Lab and was doing such beautiful work with typography in space. And students learn about her work, and then their homework assignment is quite simple. They just have to take one of Muriel Cooper's projects and recreate it using some modern tools. We also look at um, artists like Vera Molnar. Vera Molnar is a a Hungarian artist who's based in Paris, and for, since the 70s, she's been doing, writing computer software to do pen plotter drawings. So she writes code to tell the pen plotter how to draw, and her, she makes this beautiful algorithmic work, and students study her work, and they try to reverse engineer it and re recreate it. And a lot of times they fail, they fail to capture what is in the original work. And it's quite beautiful, because we ha get to have a conversation about what is it, what, why did they fail? Like, what is the space between what they make and what the artist made? We study al also designers like John Maida, who did such beautiful algorithmic work with typography. And we present the work of the school um, in different ways. And in one way, we were at a festival. We were invited to come to a festival. And what we did is we showed code and visuals side by side. So the idea is that you would, you would see actually the work of the school. We got to the festival, all the equipment said poetic on it. I told the students they should bring sunglasses, because these LED screens are just amazing. They're like powerful bright. Um, and we showed the code and the visuals side by side. So the idea is that on the right side, you would see the code that is the text that makes this visual form. And on the left side, you would see the visuals. And when, when some of the text would change, you would see a corresponding change on the left side. People thought we were actually typing um, live, which would have been amazing. It would have been quite, <laughs> quite advanced. And you can see what it looks like to have the sort of the, the code change and the visuals change. And I got really inspired by seeing my students just got so excited sketching and making these sketches. And I got so inspired by them that I started my own process of sketching. And I'll talk about kind of how I sketch with code and, and what that has led to. Um, and there's one example that I think is quite um, uh, helpful for describing how I got into certain things. Is, and this is a student, um, Yuki Yoshida, who um, for his final project at SFPC, he did this amazing book where he just, there's many ways to tell the computer how to draw a circle, like the, to draw a circle, the algorithm to draw a circle. There's many ways to do it. And he tried to collect them in a book and just to show the sort of code and the visual side by side and create this book celebrating all the ways you can tell the computer to do something. Um, and I thought of an idea and I wrote him an email and then uh, I coded it to show him what I meant. And this idea was a very simple way of drawing a circle, where you say, take um, from, from a given rectangle, take a random point on one of the four lines, and connect it to a random point on one of the other three other lines. And if that line intersects the circle, don't draw it. But if it doesn't intersect the circle, draw it. So it's a way of drawing by absence, right? You're drawing the circle by everything that doesn't hit the circle. 
And I coded this, and I got so excited about it that I tried to take letters of the alphabet. I used the word love. It didn't work very well. Um, I tried a smiley face. It didn't work very well. Um, and then I was thinking, okay, how could I get these lines to get in there and like, show what's happening in the shapes? Um, and so I, I studied light and reflection. How could, you, how could you draw lines that actually bounce off the typography? Um, and started to do the, these sketches around light and reflection and using um, even things like refraction, having the rays of light refract off of the letter forms. Um, and a lot of times these sketches lead to projects. So for example, this is an installation where I invite people to come and play with these ideas, to actually kind of jam with my sketchbook. Um, so the way this works is there's a, a light table and there's laser cut pieces and you can create shapes and the software simulates what it would look like if light was bouncing off of those shapes. And you could, there was a button, you could change where the light is coming from. And what I love about this project is that it's kind of immediately understandable. You come to it and you put your hands down, you can see your hands, and by the end, people actually just start, they don't even touch the letters, they just start playing with their body, right? And um, there's this beautiful moment here, like somebody, people started putting their heads down, right? I, I like did all this work and cut all these shapes, and in the end, people are just using their body. And what I think is so beautiful is you can actually see this process where um, they come to the project and then they immediately understand it because of their body. And then it goes to their brain and they start to figure out how does the light work and how could I trap it and get it to do what I want. And then it goes back to their body. And this process of body, brain, body, I find so beautiful and so um, just like so touched when I see it. So as a result of kind of being inspired by these students and jamming with light, I started this process of doing daily sketching. And I post on Instagram um, basically sketches, short animations, short poems that I write with code. Um, and they're basically like kind of what I'm in inspired by. There's a few, I'll try to explain where I'm coming from. Um, this is a really uh, amazing source of inspiration. We use this in the school. Um, this is the Ten Rules by Sister, Sister Corita Kent. Um, it's popularized by John Cage, but these are ten rules for students. And my favorite rule is rule seven. Um, the only rule is work. Um, I just like this a lot. I mean, there's a lot of the rules, like just show up and, and be present and be... Um, but I just love this. The only rule is work. If you work, it will lead to something. Um, and it's just like, I don't know, we, this, that's one of the inspirations. Um, another thing is that I try to document as much as possible. And I love, I saw this guy on the subway, and I love this picture because he is, he's got his phone, he's got a camera, and he's wearing the snap spectacles. So there's three cameras. Then there's my camera. I'm trying to capture him. And I just think this is like what artists should be. Artists should always be capturing. And a lot of times when I'm coding, I'm, I'm just trying to capture my sketches. I feel like a, almost a wildlife photographer trying to photograph my sketches at the right moment and find something cool and then share it with people. Um, another rule that I have is ABI. Um, I love this a lot. It's kind of inspired by this famous part of this movie. Um, C. A always, B, B, C closing. Always be closing. So instead of always be closing, it's always be iterating. I love this idea of iterating. I'm not making a new thing every day, but I'm just changing. I'm trying to change and manipulate and modify what I've done and see where it comes and see kind of how I can push it in new directions. Um, and I, this is like one of the best images to describe this process of doing daily sketches. This is a kid, he had to write, I will make better choices over and over again. And you can see, in order to save time, he starts drawing single lines down the page. And it's, and it's beautiful because it's, it's about shortcuts, right? If you want to do something over and over again, you have to make shortcuts. And those shortcuts, those shortcuts become your style. That, that actually the shortcuts that you take, the things that help you get work done, those become your style. Those become who you are as an artist, as a designer. 
Um, and so I do these sketches. This is like light reflection, um, experimenting with colored light, having light bounce off of walls. Um, and then I was doing all this light stuff, and my um, eight-year-old daughter, she was six at the time, she's like my art director. I was doing all of this black and white stuff, and, at one, and she was like, it's cool, it's amazing. And then one day she was like, you have to do color. Um, she's like, you're, it's getting really repetitive. And so I woke up one day and I, I started to do color. Um, and so I got really obsessed with blobs and blobby shapes, and just kind of making these organic forms and seeing how they would move. And sometimes there's these beautiful things that happen where um, you, you do a sketch really quickly, and people like it way more than you do. Or you do something that you like way more than other people like. And I think this is actually amazing, the mismatch between how you feel and how other people feel. There's something quite beautiful, like I think as an artist, we, don't, we can't see how other people see our work. And oftentimes it's almost like we're in, in, you know, in, in harmony or, or disharmony with, with people. Um, I did this with the blobs. That my daughter hated this. <laughs> I, li I liked it. Um, and I, I get excited about different things. And I, I'm, I, I've been um, got really excited about this Mexico '68 design by Lance Wyman. Um, and so I started to figure out, okay, if I have these blobby shapes, how could I like do offsets and make the lines kind of, um, you know, like what he's doing. Um, and that produces all kinds of looks, like. It almost feels like almost like 1960s graphics, but I'm like kind of coding it and um, reverse engineering it in some way. And there's something I think quite beautiful. Um, I try to do 3D shapes that are really flat, or 2D shapes that look 3D. I think there's something kind of amazing about visuals that make your brain work a little more that they're slightly ambiguous, and your brain has to, they're, they're pl visually pleasant, but your brain also has to kind of process them. They're like, not like optical illusions, but something kind of magical. Um, and a lot of times the sketches are inspired by what I feel like. And so, for example, after the election in um, 2000, um, that before um, the new year, I was, I was having this feeling like, oh, what is going to happen in the next year? And so I was doing these sketches that were just like, oh, the world is so messed up right now. Um, or after the um, inauguration, we were protesting. Like, it just felt like every weekend we were, I went to JFK or I was out, and, you know, out on, um, in Manhattan like, protesting every weekend. And so I started to do these sketches that just were about pushing, like what it feels like to push. Um, and sometimes really personal, like on the anniversary of my father's passing, I was thinking about, you know, how could I make a, I couldn't do like a, a, a silly graphical sketch on that day. And I found this data of, of just motion capture of somebody walking, just a single person walking. And to me, this was so beautiful. It just was like, I, it was a way to, to kind of celebrate the anniversary or this moment. And sometimes just really random stuff, um, visual form. One thing that I find really valuable is, is having a bunch of references. So, for example, Ruth Asawa is an amazing sculpture, and she does these lovely forms that are kind of these like snaking 3D shapes um, that hang in space. Um, and a lot of times I'll have these references, and I just say, like, what could I, how, what's an homage? Like, how could I do something where I kind of take their language, or and not even take their language, but just say, like, could I do something that, you know, is inspired by them and get a feeling. A couple more things that I think are really um, interesting in terms of what I do kind of on a, um, with my daily practice. So I do sketches every day. I post them on Instagram. Um, and another thing that I do that I find really quite valuable is open office hours. And so um, I make myself available once a week. It's been a little slow these last, um, in this 2018. Uh, but I miss it, and I'm going to start it up again. I'll probably do one this week. Um, and what I do is I just tweet out, and I make myself available for three, to three hours a week. And people Skype in, I meet people in person, and I just listen. And it's quite beautiful to actually say, I'm going to take a moment in my week where I'm not checking my email, and I'm not thinking about work, but I'm actually listening to other people's issues, and they could be life things, or work things, or 
um, study or, you know, they need help with the project, technical things. Um, and I basically just talk to people, and I find this to be really valuable and, and actually quite helpful even, like, listening to other people helps me listen to myself. I'm going to do one thing which I think is really powerful, which is I'm going to read a book by my daughter. Um, and she made this book. Um, it's called I Am Art. I think it's amazing. One of the best books um, to describe what art is. Okay, by River the Artist, I Am Art. This book is for Apo and Agan and Nana. Art. Art is like you feel free. You feel like you can do anything, and you know what to draw. And if you don't, you look at you. You are the one, and you have your own imagination. And maybe in your imagination, you will see lines and squares. It took me a long time to figure out what that was. You will see lines and squares. And in those squares and lines, you will see art. And that art is amazing, and you are too. Stop looking at me. Uh, <laughs> art, 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 art. I am art. Art. Food is art. Art. Anything is art. Art, 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 art. Art, art, art. Art, 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 art. Um, actually, it was really incredible at um, Michael mentioned the AIGA talk. At the end of the talk, they had um, kind of live um, dictation, and so the, the screen just said art, 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 art on it. It's quite beautiful. Um, so I, I mentioned I have a kind of special surprise, um, and I've been working really hard on it. Um, I've been doing a lot of experiments. So, when Ravi asked me to come to Design and Daba, he said, um, you know, we not only do we want you to come and talk, we want you to make something. And that's an amazing invitation. Somebody says, we want you to make something. Not just come and show what you do, but can we make something together? Um, and so um, I've been doing a lot of experiments. He said, what would you like to do? And I've been doing a lot of experiments with augmented reality. In particular, saying, like, if you know where your device is in space, what kinds of things can we do with it? Things like... Um, recording photographs or video in space, um, and then painting, like you could paint the frames of video, so you know where the frames of video are taken, you could paint them. Um, or taking photographs and then breaking them into 3D, so you take a photograph of something and then you can move around it. Um, doing things like a slit scan, where you're painting, you're sort of grabbing pixels from the camera and painting them in 3D. This is recording audio um, in 3D. And when you move, you replay the audio. This is a test of talking and seeing what happens when we record audio in space. Good luck, girl, for you to in the head. This is a test of talking and so happens when we record audio in space. And so I, and, uh, I mentioned to Ravi that I would really like to make an AR app. Um, and I've been making one, and it's in, the, it's in review for the app store. It's called Weird Type, and it's going to be out in a couple days. And it's my um, pleasure to share it with you and just tell you about this process. Um, and what it is is basically doing typography. You can enter messages, um, and then you can put those messages in space. And there's a variety of sketches that you can play with and jam with that are about kind of seeing what happens when we put messages, when we put type in space. Um, and some of them are quite subtle, like there's one where you take photographs, and the type itself is taking a photograph. And so what the type is put on kind of floats in space. And sometimes you can't even see it. It's quite beautiful, like the type is there, but you have to move to discover it. And it's that ambiguity that I really love and am excited about. Um, some random stuff. I love this, like taking letters of the alphabet and breaking them, and then as you move, you see the, um, you know, the, the typeface breaks apart. Um, and lastly, I just want to say um, how thankful I am, and you know, I love being here, and you all are awesome, and I hope you have a great conference. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.